Hey guys, I'm back. Alright, I said I was going to discuss the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the ankylosing spondylitis. So, back in, I would say, um, January, maybe February, somewhere, somewhere right along in that time frame. God, my glasses are driving me nuts. Um, I had seen the rheumatologist, finally, after finding one, it took a while to do, and um, we went in and we, you know, discussed the whole, everything that's been going on with me for the last, um, really, 15 to 20 years, and even before that, actually, you know, I'm just going to go back to childhood, my whole life, actually. But anyway, so we were discussing everything, and he said uh, at first we were thinking it may be something on the lines of fibromyalgia because of different places in the body that I was hurting and all the other issues I was having. But he wanted to do some x-rays and do a blood test. So we did that, and um, he... Um, and the x-rays, you know, he just did basic x-rays. He didn't do, like, the MRI or anything like that. But the x-rays showed what we already knew, which was the arthritis in my spine and some in my shoulder and my neck. But um, he also did blood work for the HL... I'll just, hang on a second and I'll tell you. The H H L A B. Oh God, excuse me. Sorry about that. The H L A uh, B something. Anyway, it is a gene that is associated with the ankylosing spondylitis, and that was the confirmation that he needed. So he, um, what that is, ankylosing spondylitis is a autoimmune disease in which your body attacks itself. So, um, in my case, like in, in most people's cases, it's either in the spine or in the SI joints, which is, you know, up in, down in your hips. Um, what's going on is your body is thinking something is there when it really isn't, kind of, sort of, and it's trying to repair itself, which your immune system is trying to do, is trying to repair itself. It causes inflammation, and it causes, uh, basically, I want to say bone growth in your spine and in your hips, which would cause the fusing. So if you've got, for instance, this is your, you know, your vertebrae here, or any joint, and you've got that movement in there, but when they fuse, you just, there's no movement at all, you know, basically when all the fusing has taken place. Um, <coughs> in my case, it is, uh, mainly in my spine, and my neck, and in, in, into my ribs. So, but it can affect your, not only the spine, your neck, your, your hips, which, and I do have some trouble with my hips, you know, it, they hurt a lot, but it affects your elbows, your shoulders, your knees, your ankles, anywhere that there's a joint, it can affect it. Um, it also affects your, or can affect your eyes, your heart, your lungs, um, and something else. I can't remember what organ it is, but um, yeah, it is extremely painful. There is no one 24-hour period where I'm not completely out of pain. Right now, today, I'm kind of alright. You know, I've boosted up on my Celebrex and I've popped some 800 milligram ibuprofen or whatnot. Um, they, he had started me on, well actually he had boosted my inside drugs, which is your anti-inflammatory drugs. 
Um, I was on naproxen, and he basically just, you know, upped the dosage on that. And then he put me on something, uh, muscle relaxer or something else. Um, we tried the Himera, which is the, it's a TNF blocker, and it's an injectable pen or a syringe you inject yourself with. I had the pen. That hurts. It's very painful because um, it, it burns. I mean, you don't, the needle itself doesn't hurt. It's the medication. It basically feels like you're injecting yourself with the alcohol. It's really bad. But um, I can't, I had to quit taking it because what all the TNF drugs do is they lower your immune system to a point to where it's non existent which is okay because that can help with the inflammation because that'll cut down on the, you know, that. But being that lowers it so much to almost nil, it also causes you to um, be susceptible to any infection, viruses, and whatnot. In my case, I had um, a really, really bad cold and a severe sinus infection, which I'm still dealing with now. You know, it was, it was, God, it was awful. It was got, it had gotten to a point, and this was even after rounds of antibiotics. I took like two or three different rounds of, three different rounds of antibiotics. And you got to be careful with that because your system will get used to that. And then if you need antibiotics later on, they won't work. So you got to watch that. But the infection itself, like I said, it had gotten to a point um, I was smelling it constantly, tasting it. It was just, it was, it was bad. It was awful. And I'm still not completely over that yet. But, um, what else? Um, so yeah, uh, also when you take the Humira, you have to do blood work to check your liver function and something else just to make sure that it's not you know hurting you so I had done the blood test because I was on the Humira for like two months I did the blood test and went back in for the results and the first time I went back in um, they didn't get the um, authorization from the doctor's office so I had to reschedule, and I rescheduled for, um, well, no, she, I was actually in a parking lot when they told me this, and I'm like, all right, fine, well, just, you know, let me know when you reschedule it, and a few days later, I had to call her back, because I was like, okay, you know, nobody ever called with a new appointment if they've got the authorization or whatever, and, um, so, in which they had, they sent call back yet, so they gave me the appointment. And it was for another two weeks. So, I go on the appointment. Get in there. Oh, well, there was a misunderstanding, and they didn't get, I don't know what had happened, but anyway. She's go, she said, well, let's go ahead and reschedule it, and we'll get you in next week we'll get it dealt with and she asked me if I needed a shot because at that time I was getting um, shots in in my back actually one of them was like right in the spine but um, with oh my god that was so painful but it helped I mean as odd as that sounds it's like you had to go through hell just to feel better but um so okay they make the appointment I get back in again. Now we're on the third time. Walk in, and I signed in, and they call me back, and, she, and there's some other lady who I didn't know, and she changed. He said, um, or she said, that he had changed clinics, and that he would only be at this, damn, be at this one like once a week or whatever, which is fine, but being as he had changed you know, clinics went with another group, my insurance was no longer good with them because they didn't take the insurance, so 
now. I still don't know what happened with the blood work. I'm going to send, I've had blood work since then at my regular doctor's and, you know, everything turned out fine except for my cholesterol, which is 200. My cholesterol was 280 something and my triglycerides were three, I think, some like So we got to work on that. Um, so yeah, as of now, I know I have to find a new rheumatologist, which is a pain in the ass. So, that's what's up with that. But again, like I said, it's extremely painful. Oh, L, yeah, let me get into the, uh, how you actually get, um, ankylosing spondylitis. I'm watching the other computer at the same time. I'm doing that video before. <coughs> but, um, excuse me. Again, like I said, I was positive for the, um, see, I cannot remember anything, the HLA-B, whatever that is, gene. Now, you just don't have that gene. Um, males and females do carry this AS, and, but the females do not carry the gene. And you don't have to have the gene to have engrossing spondylitis. Um, but it just, if you do have the gene... It's just a very good, it's a confirmation tool, basically. But um, the gene can only be passed from your father. So, basically, I contracted, you know, this passed down from my dad. And, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he had it, because you can ha also have the gene and not have ankylosing spondylitis. So, you know, it just happened so that I ended up with it. But, um... But yeah, that's where I am with that. Um, like I said in the other video, you know, I'll get into a lot of other things. I'll do the whole bipolar thing in a, in a whole separate vid. But, um, yeah, that's it. It is extremely, you know, like I said, you don't go through a day without pain. And some people do have to suffer with iritis and uvatitis in their eyes. Oh, as I stated before, it affects your, your, your breathing because in my case, when I spasm, it just starts from the spine and goes around the ribcage all the way around. So when I have spasms, it contracts. So basically everything inside is getting squeezed. That hurts. Uh, that's why every so often, like I said in the other video, you're going to see certain things like when I grunt or move a certain way, um, it'll spasm. If I spasm really, really bad, I will, you'll know, because you'll see, <laughs> if I ever do it, I'll see, you'll see it. But, um, it, again, it's extremely painful, but it affects me in that way. Um, there are times that I cannot even turn my head, you know, to look left or right or whatever. Um, oh God, what else? The el you know, may sometimes in my elbows I get a little discomfort, but it's mainly my back, my, my neck, my rib cage, and my shoulder has been, for the last week, the first time it's ever bothered me. But, um, you know, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not good at all. And a lot of people to this day don't, have never heard of it, you know, even like now when I have to look for a new rheumatologist, I have to find, make sure before I even make an appointment with them that they've heard of it and they know, you know, and know something about it because even some of the doctors have never heard of it, even though it's been around since probably the late 70s, it's just never really, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's crazy. Um... Back when I was a kid, you know, I can remember a lot of people saying to me, you know, you need to sit up straight and blah, blah, blah. And I can remember, you know, thinking to myself, okay, I thought I was sitting up straight. To me, I was sitting up straight. Because if I would sit the way they wanted me to sit, it would hurt. And I thought, well, I'm not going to do that. You know, I mean, that's, why would I do that? So yeah, I can vividly remember, like my mom and other people, you know, getting on to me for not sitting up straight and slouching, 
Well, to me, I wasn't slouching because I was just sitting the way I normally had, had always sat. Now we know why, because I couldn't. You know, I also have, you know, curvature of the spine, which I had when I was a kid. But it was it's also been associated all this time with the AS. And just, you know, again, especially back then, nobody knew about that. They just thought, okay, well, you're slouching. Stop doing that. And everybody with AS doesn't slouch. It's just, in my case, that happens to be what's going on. But, uh, anywho, oh well. Alrighty, I'm going to jump off here for now. Um, I will discuss a little bit more about it. But, um, I will get the other video uploaded. And then work on getting this render. And I'm using a different camera on this one than I did the other one, so I don't know how long it's going to take because the other video was with my flip cam. And that's been probably the last hour or so. And I'm using this camera, which is my, my good camera, the one that does not ever leave. Um, yeah, but anyway, I'll work on that. All right, guys, I will talk at you all later. And, um... Yeah. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.